Wow, so many views and subscribers. Thank you. I hope that I'm not going to lose you all now. Fasten your science seat belts. We talk about insulation. In a moment, I'll explain my choice of building materials for this camper van. But now please note that insulation is one of the most controversial topics in camper van builds. My opinion is that everybody is making their own camper van to suit their own needs. I want that my camper van functions well in these kind of conditions. Hey hey, how is it going? I'm a traveler from Finland who wanted to share adventures, technical challenges and the fun of living in a self-made camper van. Welcome aboard! Hey hey, and welcome to today's video. The Finnish folklore calls these weeks after New Year's the Ox Weeks. It comes from the saying that you need to be strong like an ox and work like an ox to survive to the next public holidays. This is how the winters are sometimes in Finland too. But anyway, I'm going to talk about the insulation of my camper van in this video and I hope that it brings some joy to those who are designing or building their own camper vans. Here is what the insulation is for. Radiation, conduction and convection. Radiant heat transfer occurs, for example, when sun emits heat through windows. As you see, I don't have many windows in this camper van. Conduction. I can see it in practice when I touch here. This is insulated with the elastomeric foam sheet, this one. It feels, feels warm. But instead here, in the seam of the gasket, I can already feel some condensation water and this conductivity lets the outside cold air creep in inside the camper van and this collects moisture. All the materials have their own thermal conductivity value. For example, this elastomeric foam sheet has a value of 0.03. This polystyrene board has a value of 0.02. They are both really good to prevent thermal breaching. This polyester fiber board has a conductivity value of 0.04, so it conducts heat a little bit more than the other materials. When we compare it to the, for example, outside material of this camper van, normal galvanized steel, for example, its conductivity value is around 60. So 60, 0.02. Big difference in conductivity. And lastly, the convection. Convection is the flow of heat in gas or liquid. It doesn't need direct contact. In summer, I utilize convection to cool down my camper van living area with the flow that is created by my roof van. In winter, I prevent the cold draft from door seams by placing the hot heater outlets near the door seams in the camper van. Now to the materials. This one is closed cell elastomeric foam sheet without the adhesive surface. It is a flexible foam sheet based on synthetic plastic polymers. In general, there are many different trademarks of it. For example, Armaflex, Gayflex, Kaiflex, Kimco Isover and Airflex. They all have a little bit different qualities, such as moisture resistance, fire performance and environmental considerations. For example, more or less sustainable manufacturing based on the process chemicals they use and the harmful residues that are left over in the final product. Moving on, you might have noticed that this doesn't have any sticky surface. It is because I decided to use this. It is a solvent-free adhesive designed for elastomeric polymer sheets. It is a water-based adhesive and it is a valid option to the traditional integrated adhesive surface. It is more expensive and much more difficult to spread, but I think it's a good option if you are looking for solvent-free solutions. There was another product available too. 
It was a two-component glue designed for marine purposes, but the problem was that the manufacturer didn't promise the compatibility with elastomeric polymer sheets. Next material is panels made of heat-bound polyester fibers, a good alternative to, for example, Havelock wool. They are said to be antibacterial and mold and mildew resistant. They are completely dust-free, which makes them really nice to work with. They are certified by Finnish Allergy and Asthma Federation, and they have really good fire rating class. For the floor insulation, I selected expanded polystyrene board. It is very rigid, so it is a little bit difficult to fit in all the corners, but I think the insulation qualities make it really nice for the winter use. Now, a spray foam warning. This camper van contains flexible polyurethane foam sprayed into the structural beams of the ceiling, on the upper walls and a little bit on the floor. I know many cases where the spraying of foam has gone wrong. It can break the spot welds or other attachments of the sheet metal and it can make the van outside bumpy and buckled. It also brings certain limitations for repairs, for example, to welding. But we have a certain expert in our family and they offered to select a flexible spray foam and apply it for us. Thus, we selected to fill the upper structural beams, the sides and the floor and minimize condensation this way. Finally, the last insulation material. It is polypropylene and butyl rubber insulation tape. Because of Campervan's sheet metal is such a good thermal bypass because of conduction, it is not recommended to place plywood directly onto it. It needs the thermal break. And this 1.2 mm layer is very good for it because the butyl rubber layer vulcanizes around the attachment screws and brings a layer of really high tensile strength and low permeability to water. Now you know the materials and I will explain the practical steps of insulation. In practice it took three months, we worked only on weekends and I have made a technical blog about the whole journey. If you wish to know more, I suggest that you visit the technical blog that I will link in the description. First, I covered tightly all the sheet metal surfaces with the elastomeric foam sheet and I used the water-based solvent-free adhesive to glue it. There were three exceptions. Firstly, the bottom side beams, I let them breathe. Secondly, the channel underneath the door handles, I let them breathe too, because they leak water. Thirdly, I ensured all the wiring harnesses, cables and lock mechanisms had room for maintenance if they need some repairs. Second step, I filled the cavities with this polyester fiber insulation sheet. Those three exceptions apply here too. Step three, an expert sprayed the flexible polyurethane foam into the structural beams of the ceiling, upper walls and on the floor. Step four, the camper van floor is insulated with extruded polystyrene board, the original plywood floor and vinyl floor panels, which feel warm to the feet. And step five, the plywood panels are isolated from the sheet metal with a 1.2 mm thick insulation tape. This all has worked really well so far, also in below zero Celsius temperatures. Of course, nothing is perfect and you do you. In the future, if I get my hands on a structural moisture measurement device, it would be really curious to see if some parts of this camper van are more moist than the others. Or what do you think? Should I try to find that kind of sensor and test it? Maybe this whole camper van is rotten and I just don't know it yet. Hopefully not. But hey, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you all have a very good start of the new year and happy Ox Weeks. See you later. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe, like and share. See you next time.